this network. What is going on, Facebook? This is the Bury the Needle podcast, episode nine. I am your host, YT Rhymes. I'm here with Rocco from East Van Wear and Tattoo Company and Oliver from Divine Inc., where we are in Terrace, BC. Terrace, BC. I see it's snowing up there, eh? It doesn't stop snowing up here. Yeah, we only have two seasons, and then it's winter suns. and not winter. Winter is coming. Yeah, it's but sunny is, right now. Is it raining? <laughs> No, it's sunny. Yeah. Beautiful day out there today. Oh, this girl is my screensaver has me distracted. Yeah. Okay, I'm Sorry. trying to find no. I'm trying to get in here. What? Oh yeah, Facebook to share it. Oh. Where is it on the Axis That podcast? Bury the needle. Bury the needle. And also on the Battle Last Global Facebook, YT. Uh, I didn't post it to Battle Last Global, no. Oh, we should. It's going down. We wanna get we wanna we wanna get this way they'll see more of F this and everything. We wanna advertise all the podcasts you guys do. Okay. So they see that we're streaming it through. So battle acts, those people there will actually, you know, and we wanna see that, you know, let, let them notice that there's more than just one podcast. How many podcasts is Axes Up or F this doing right now? Uh, uh, lots. Ten plus. Yeah, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight podcast, you know, and that's a good thing, right? So there's always some kind of show for every certain person, right? Yeah, for the viewers, make sure to go check out F This Network, all of our podcasts. We got a punk podcast. We got our new the broadcast that the, the broadcast, ladies are doing. I love that. Yeah, Who, who's doing that one? That's Shante and Sarah. Yeah, and it's called the broadcast. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's awesome. spelled it's spelled Brad. But like it's B-R-A, like bra, and then apostrophe D, broadcast. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's good. I think it's a brilliant idea. It's brilliant. When he said it, I just chuckled. I was like, that's great, man. It's pure gold. Where are they, where are they doing it? Over there? Yeah, to Shantae and uh, Chris's place. Oh, boy. So, anyhow. Zoom me in, dog. There we go. There he is. All right. Yeah, I'm just sharing it to Battle X Global right now. I think now. I'm going to watch it from the other one while you guys... Can you see me when I click out? No, I see the oh. Ali Lama. Really? Okay. So the Ali Lama. What, what are you trying to do? I was going to just monitor the chat, but I'll do it from my other phone. Yeah. I can hand do. tattoos. You guys see that? What is that? A hand tattoo. You know, basically some people come in, they want hand tattoos. You got to make sure the one at the end of the day, I think it's Dots is the best way of doing it. You get the better result. Or just be committed. Like, I've had two touch-ups on mine, and I still need one more. You just got to get it redone, man. Well, I've had – what I did when I when I did this, with you guys know the one on my left hand is for my kid that I lost. So, the thing was, though, that I was fucked up, too, at the same time. Yeah, you know, exactly. Old man and my kid are fucking nine months apart, so we're on a nice fucking cocaine bender for about a year and a half. I did cocaine. But to understand addiction, what was good about that, that's about it. So – I can try to say to people, and I did. I did it on my own. I quit on my own. I just knew it wasn't for me, and I uh, made a better person out of myself. And it made me realize that there's people out there that can use uh, a helping hand. Only the ones that want to help themselves. Yeah. Someone comes to me and says, "Rocky, you want to help me? Sure, I'll help you." If they can't help themselves, they say, "You know what? Do me a favor. What's that? Fuck off. Pack your shit. Get the fuck yeah. out of here. You fucking waste of time. You want to cry the blues." You should do it right here, brother. It's your fucking heart that doesn't want to do it no more. You don't sit in a fucking room with 12 people telling them your fucking problems all day long. Quit yeah. doing go, first just, of all. Yeah, just say no. No. no connection to your drug dealer, for one thing. And no connection to anybody who's hanging out that does drugs. And put yourself in the gym. Eat yeah, right. Stop, glor- stop glorifying it in your head. Yeah. Man, it was the worst three months of my fucking life, man. I tell you something, calling them up. Answer your phone. Don't answer your phone. Answer your phone. Don't answer your phone. But I got through it. <laughs> You know, I could still go out and have some fucking drinks and put a fucking have a good time without sitting there for fucking three days. Like some people, they break down and say, what's wrong with you, man? Well, that's why yeah. I don't that's why I don't fucking mess with it, because I know I've got no off switch, man. It's like I can't go out and just have a good time. I end up fucking spending 10 grand. Yeah. 
hey, make sure you spend it with me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Ended with me. So anyhow, uh, you guys know about uh, the pandemic that's going around the world. It shut down a few things, but one thing we're talking about today is going to be conventions. Um, hopefully, like, what are the conventions? What are we going to need to see, expect from conventions when the doors open up uh, to the to the convention shows? Um, is it going to be mask mandatory? Is it going to be so many people in the room at one time? How are convention is going to make money is there more involvement with more equipment that you got to purchase or rent is there going to be one person per booth like it's two right now you know saying so the cost of the show is going to be more so what i've done is i posted for next year 2022 the east fan tattoo show which is going to be out of the crazy cultural center um the marijuana it's, iguana it's going to be the second weekend of june so 10 11 12 but at my show, the artists move in on a Thursday and they move out on the Monday. Uh, the show that we have going on there is a beautiful place. It's got a bar upstairs, a big patio area for dinners where the artists can hang out. It's got different rooms all over the place, a place where artists can actually relax. Clients that are getting big pieces can actually take a break. Um, you know, we're going to do the car show up top parking lot. Uh, of course, tattoo contests, bikini, Miss East Van bikini contest with a big cash prize of five thousand dollars and, and, also, fight, and she has to fight miss siri at the end of it yep and uh <laughs> then we have of course the pinup pageant the burlesque show and then of course rock and roll we gotta get the fucking rock and roll and along with some hip-hop artists from the battle axe global Art society right so it's gonna be it's gonna be an entertaining show it's gonna bring life back um but like i said what is gonna be expected from us now what what do the artists have to have? Do they all, of course, we all have to have our blood pathogens when we do conventions. I mean, here in Canada, um, you know, the, the health inspectors do go through them. I've been to a show at um, in the States. I went to the Hawaii Expo. And it's pretty, pretty gnarly. I mean, crazy. Um, and then I went to uh, an expo that another um, company was putting on. And that was when I was down there last. It was just fucking terrible. It was so terrible. It was empty. It was terrible. I think it was more like a money grab. But you see that there's people that get involved in conventions. Maybe they do it for the money. But myself, I do it for the culture, right? To keep the culture going. Because there's so many different aspects of a convention, not just tattoo artists. You have modeling going on. You know, the bikini contest is... Not a contest where women are putting themselves out looking like whores. It's actually a contest of class. You know, it doesn't matter big, small, or medium. The size of the woman is always beautiful. And, of course, it's going to be tattooed women, mostly. But, you know, to sit there and judge a female on her basic, you know, look and her persona and everything is what you want to judge on. And, of course, the judging is not going to be just three young kids. It's actually, you know... The judges I had for last year is actually one guy's a judge, one guy's a lawyer, and the other guy's a realtor. So, and these gentlemen, you know, are very respected. And thing is, though, we want, um, you know, fair contests, even with uh, the pinup pageant. Uh, that's you're something. Involved, if you're so involved, it's fucking rigged. I'll guarantee that. <laughs> Never rigged. It's always a true first, blue. First page. The true blue, position. right? The true blue. You got to remember that. The thing is, though, and that's the problem with some of these contests. However, you've been to these conventions where a tattoo, like when you see somebody win a fucking tattoo trophy and you're like, what the fuck were those judges thinking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been to those ones together. <laughs> well, it's because if there's a unique name, an artist that's in that contest, they feel that a younger person, a person that's, you know, not as known, has done a better piece uh, you know, they shouldn't lose to, uh, uh, you know, a godfather of tattooing and everything. But at the end of the day, what we had planned for last year, of course, of course, the cool we shut down was there were certain points, you know, the critiqueness, the lining, the shading, the blotchy, the color, everything, you know, the placement. So it's, it's, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be, it's done more professional. Uh, I remember one contact, I went to one convention the last convention I ever supported, the Vancouver Tattoo Show, those fucking two pieces of shit that I took care of for 11 years. And that's what I try to say. I help people out. At the end of the day, that show turned out to be a real fucking gong show, terrible show. It turned out to be a very terrible show. Anyways, I threw my glasses on the stage and I threw them to the fucking judges. I said, 
put my fucking glasses on. I don't know what the fuck you were judging there. You know, I don't know what the fuck the guy was judging. That's because fuck- they were giving Craig awards and Rocco was really mad. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know, that was a uh, fucking He's April blinded one. by anger. Acro a- was the fucking judge of that show there. And I was like, what the fuck, man? I mean, but anyways, some people don't know how to judge tattoos. And, you know, me being what I do for a living, I don't tattoo. I'm a collector. I got eight, two hours on my body. But I always see and watch and pay attention. I can teach somebody how to tattoo the way I know everything. Right, but and I do an apprentice program, but I don't tattoo. But I can see when someone's making a mistake or someone's not supposed to have a certain line in a certain area, right? And you know that too, Oliver, right? Yeah, that's it, man. How long have you been tattooing now, Oliver? Uh, 19 years. September. And what, the last what, 12, in the last 12 months, you finally know how to stay in the lines, which is yeah, nice. I try and do that. Yeah, so anybody in the terrace or surrounding area, if you need a tattoo, you can give Oliver a shout. Just don't, maybe give Tam a call unless you want to wait. I'm booking it for yeah, Tam Arsenal. There you go right there. How long has Tam been tattooing for? Just under three years. Okay, so now the thing is, the law is five years, but I think the law of three years, especially something like there. Now there's a good head on her well, shoulder. It depends. It depends on who you're working with, man. You can you can get rapid growth. It, it depends if you're a, if you're receptive to learn or you're hard. To, if you're not soft and stuff like, I'm not. When I sit down with John the Dutchman, I'm not fucking running my mouth. Yeah, that's it, man. I sit down and shut the fuck up and I listen because I want to learn something. I want to take something away. I don't have anything to offer him. <laughs> I want to take something. <coughs> one of those artists that knows everything, and you're doing new things, and you got it all figured out. You're not going to get any better, man. You got to be supple like a sponge, and you got to take in what people are giving you. And maybe you don't know how to There's do it. There's always room to improve. Yeah. Always. And with John, like you know, Oliver's message, John the Dutchman, who I consider the Godfather of tattoos. He is the Godfather. Man. Fucking right, he is. No, uh, he's always got some knowledge. We'll say, you know, and even when I have cow, I you know, fresh ink. People go, oh, you know, the Dutchman. I, I, I a rock. I say, yeah, I call him John. I just want to give a quick shout out to our Facebook viewers here. We got Esten. He said, how's it going, everyone? Susan says hi. We got Mike Kilberry on there. And Michael Mike, muted himself. Micah is on there. Did I mute myself? Yeah, there so you go. So shout outs to Micah and Mike and Susan and Esten. Maze is out there killing in. it, man. Yeah, Maze Overlay is killing it. Yeah, for sure. That whole that whole grind mode idea is brilliant. Mike has yeah. got a great, great thing going. Yeah, there. shout out to Grind Mode. They actually gave me a shout out on their uh, their stream last night. Beautiful man. Yeah. Shout out, out to Micah. Shout out to Micah. You know, Micah is yeah, uh, he's got spearhead Alan yeah. Bovar Society, and this is he's spearheading this whole this whole thing. And I tell you yeah. some adventure for everybody to give an opportunity to all our hip hop artists. I think we have over forty five artists in Battle Ask Bovar Society, so this will. You know, separate the the boys from the men. Let them understand what really what you really need to do. In yeah. This so I know I know this is a uh, I know this is buried the needle. But uh, anybody who's yeah. into hip hop or <laughs> is doing hip hop or is interested in hearing some dope hip hop, uh, Grind Mode Cipher is doing a live reaction, um, like post today. They're doing a live reaction stream where they they'll play your songs. I got a couple songs that are going to be played there tonight. So make sure to check out Grandma's Cypher tonight, y'all. Oh. Yeah, good, good, great, great, great group of guys. Like I said, Sunday night hip hop church. Yeah, shout out to AOK and Lingo. Yeah. So, anyways, back to tattooing. I guess this is the very new, but we do have you know hip hop playing in our shops. I think that I think that they run in the north here. That's an intrinsic part of just what we do because we we're a grassroots battle axe movement. We we're day one hip hop heads, man. Yeah. And, and our table has done a good job about staying true to that and you know that's all interconnected for me spray painting when i was young to getting you know looking up to jimbo and rocco and his brother and just Jimby. You know, the hip-hop <laughs> and the gangsters and the tattoo shops and the harleys and low riders and car clubs and pretty girls and like that's just living and it's, yeah. and i just kind of twist up a little bit of what we got going up here is a fishing and hunting and hiking and yeah you got the life up there, brother. I seen you fishing the other day. Eh? Oh fuck, I slayed. Yeah, yeah. I gotta come up there. So, anywho, we were talking about artists there. Um, you know, some young artists that come out of the gates 
All I can say is keep your fucking uh, humbleness. Get rid of the attitude. If you can do a good line, you can do a good line. If you do a great tattoo, go on to the next tattoo. Actually, uh, yeah, speak- I see it all over here at the East Van shop. I see it all with uh, the apprenticeship program. And I've seen their heads get big. And I fucking just sit there and, you know, like one, you know, this shop is a revolving door. Okay. These new artists, when they start doing their apprenticeship program and do the 18 months of critique, this are bringing in minimum three to four thousand dollars every two weeks. You're not going to find that being a new artist. And also for me to bring you to a convention at one or two years tattooing, you should be licking my fucking nuts and thanking me. But at the end of the day, that kind of exposure, no one's going to give you that shot, man. Well, at the end of the day, no one's going to get that shot no more because it's come to an end, I tell you. My apprenticeship program here is fifteen thousand dollars now. Okay, you drop seventy five hundred. I check you out for three months. If I don't like you, I don't think it's for you. See you later. No refund. You move forward. You pay attention. And at the end of the day, you're here for eighteen months after to get critiqued. So you know that you know you're not doing a tattoo where you think you can do it. Yeah, I had a fucking artist doing whatever the fuck she wanted. Didn't fucking contact me. Didn't say nothing. Half of her tattoos, all the ink came out because she doesn't know how to put. And you know what the biggest issue with new artists is? They're in a fucking rush. Slow down when you're tattooing. Slow the fuck down. First you get good, then you get fast. Don't try to be in a hurry. Well, you know, it just goes with the momentum that you get. You're not getting yeah. faster. No, it's just yeah. what you're doing because now you're getting better at it. Yeah, yeah. you're getting but into a routine. Those circles like, can't be sped up when you're putting that color. And those circles got to go nice. It's weirder when you're, you're saying that today when I was tattooing, I was just thinking about little circles, little circles, little circles. Right? Little circles, man. <laughs> That's it. Little circles. Yeah. Oh, oh, Oliver did a dope. Oh, your fucking stencil. Oliver did a uh, My stencil's crooked. And of course, they need crooked. Fucking brain's crooked, you fucking morons. Yeah. Oliver, but anyway, you know, Oliver like I say, it. I'm not a practical artist, but I'm a consultant. I'm also a collector. I've sat in 82 different tattoo artist chairs. I've been tattooed by 82 different artists up to date. So I've heard their stories, seen their styles. Not any, not any artist. Has the same style, not any same no. look, the appearance. When it comes to you know, style, like for me, that's, I learned that from Jimbo about ten years ago. I I started getting kind of disheartened. We were getting into the dandelion, infinity knot, and bird and anchor phase of tattooing. <laughs> and I was so fucking disheartened, man. I was like, this is not what I signed up for. And I was talking to Jimbo, and he goes, "Bro, you draw on people for money." You can just be quiet now and go do your job. <laughs> and Mike, is, Mike is in uh, Facebook. Mike is in the Facebook chat. He says tattoos are like car repair shops. I can do it right and take my time, or I can speed it up and do it wrong. Or you can go home and do it yourself and fuck it right up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, YT, I tell you a story over here at my shop. I don't ask the phone number. They won't allow me to because you get that call. Hey, how you doing? I got a great idea for a tattoo. It's only. <laughs> 15 minutes it's so simple you know and i'm like <laughs> click and they fall back like sorry i lost you go, no no i hung up because it sounds like you know what you're fucking doing why are you looking for a tattoo being a tattooer i've tattooed three people you can find it on youtube okay <laughs> now but no it was no, because I'm not going to disrespect the art form, because i tell you something. <laughs> the art has to be one of the most amazing jobs. I would it is, say. really. Remember, our parents want us to be lawyers and fucking doctors. I want my kid tattoo artist, an artist, okay? Because yeah. I tell you something, you take that art anywhere in the world and you're tattooing humans. And if you're good, that's all you need to do. You're good and you're humble. I have fucking no yeah. artists, man. They're so fucking miserable. So and you know what? You know so what's important too? I've learned from you, Rocco and Sean, is to be kind and generous too, man. That yeah. takes it another, you know what? If you're a good human and you're kind and you're generous, you know, people will never hold a bad memory. Of you. Your funeral won't be filled with shit talkers. Yeah. Remember one thing, you're a fucking, uh, you're a psychiatrist at the same time as being a, t- a tattoo right. artist. Your client's going to tell you something, all right? It might be something deep and dark, but at the end of the day, right. you know, you just sit there and listen. If you want, you you can't be like some people that fucking just talk about themselves, right? We're That's not going to talk about no forty <laughs> fucking cards. Oh yeah, talk about how many awards this guy won and about. Oh this my god! Uh... Listen to me. Artists aren't sponsored with money. They're sponsored with discounts. Okay, so get that That's fucking it. sponsored thing out of your head. Unless they're yeah. fucking paying for your gas, your hotels, and everything when you go out of town. 
You get a spot at the booth. You get to make money there because you're using their supplies. So stop making it bigger than it is, you fucking idiots. Yeah. Sponsorship. You get a discount. You don't get a discount on the good stuff. You get a discount on the leftover stuff, okay? So wake the fuck up. I mean, maybe there's some names out there that actually get boxes of needles and everything sent to them. Yes. I understand all that. But at the end of the day, with the money we charge, you shouldn't even be worried about supplies. Just do your job. You don't see fucking mechanics posting up. I'm sponsored by fucking, I'm sponsored by Mastercraft. I got 20% off my toolbox. Exactly. That's all a sponsorship is, a discount off their product. <laughs> and all you do is shut out their product, right? Oh, so so you use these fucking kind of needles. Listen, you're going to use the right needle that suits you, that you can work with. It doesn't matter. It's like a machine. You know, everybody's fucking doing the fucking rotary thing nowadays. I mean, I got a whole showcase full of coils. I mean, I used to love walking in the shop and I used to call it the hive, the wow. back room, buzzing wow. everywhere. Now it's, hey, did anybody tag? Hello? Is anybody <laughs> tattooing back there? Okay. <laughs> they can't fucking hear nothing no more unless I'm getting fucking deaf. But, you know, I'm saying the industry's changed. And like I said, I'm looking forward <laughs> to conventions reopening soon. I just want to know, like, I want to see exactly, you know, what is expected from us, um, the general, the people holding the shows, and what's expected from the artists when they come. You know, it's going to be a good one. I can't wait. Next year's going to be a good time, um, and that's about what I can say there. But and on the tattoo aspect, Oliver. Yeah. Who are you smiling at, Tamara? No, someone said that when I was catching that fish by the tail, they're like, "Check it out, Canada's deadliest catch." <laughs> Looks like you're harsh posing, eh? I was a fluke pose. pose. I was trying to get my hair away. I was like Captain Morgan. Oh, like you just <laughs> your hair back. Captain Morgan. <laughs> your pose. I like know. You... <laughs> one girl's like, is that how you fish in the north? You just kneel down in the water and wait for the fish. Right? Come by and just oh, God, thank you for this <laughs> meal that I'm going to fucking eat tonight. Just reach down and grab it. I reach down and grab it. Uh, where is Tamara today? Um, I have to check on her. I think that she's she's missing right yeah, now. Yeah, she is uh, MIA. At the moment. Really? Like MIA, she found herself a boyfriend? Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's been tattooing for three weeks straight. Let her loosen up those juices, man. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Bro, working with you? you? Talk about my main dude like that. <laughs> hey, working with you all? <laughs> man. My main dude. She'll be back on Tuesday when you're open. Yeah, she will. Did she make it home last night? I don't think so. Okay, well. It's either Jolliver's mad or jealous, one of the two. I'm just making sure she's alive. She texted me back. Good. Tell her to send me a, a naked picture of her boyfriend. <laughs> she doesn't even know who it is. She's like, is this Oliver? <laughs> is this <laughs> you're Oliver? fucking, you're ahead. <laughs> oh, God. I, I he's just popular with her now. <laughs> <laughs> this is the llama. <laughs> the white tea, you got any tattoos? Nope. No, why not? Um, I don't know. I just... You don't have a tattoo? No. Don't do it, man. <laughs> you know, seriously, I want to ask you a question, YT. So why, how, how young are you now? I'm 20, 29 going on 30 next month. There you go. And the thing is, are you being around tattoos? You know, this is what people have to understand. Tattoos aren't for everybody. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, they're not for everybody. Yeah. The thing is, though, it's do not like, you know, make you want to get tattooed. Like, do we p push it on you? No. There you go. We don't even. We don't even know. I didn't even know he didn't have tattoos. Yeah, we'll see. So that, that, you know, that's like, people I mean, with I've tattoos and without it. tattoos. Is that people with tattoos don't care if you don't have any? It's the people that don't have them that, for some reason, sometimes care that I got them. <laughs> like, what the fuck does you're it matter to you, you dude? Yeah, you're you're a criminal. <laughs> Satan, you're a criminal. Watcher. Right? It's like that one post I've seen. I walk by a lady. She grabs her purse tighter. The guy goes to the girl with the purse. My, what I have tattooed on my sleeve is worth more than your purse, bitch. Yeah. You know yeah. Okay? So don't think yeah. you're fucking... Hey, you got to remember some Tattoos part of the fashion industry nowadays, man. Everybody's getting tattooed. There's no meaning behind their tattoos. Just give me something to look good so it makes my, my boobs look bigger. You know what I'm saying? Or yeah. whatever. <laughs> we got gangsters who want to be gangsters walking in the shop all day long. Get sleeves done. Okay? They want to have that gangster look. You know what I'm saying? One sleeve, one day. Yeah, you know they want to be out at the bar next week holding their beer with their fucking who knows what the fuck their tattoo means. But that's that's exactly where it's going. Kyle just made twenty five hundred bucks. <laughs> hey, you know if they want to pay, we have to uh, you know do the best we can for them and hopefully you know guide them the right way. But the tattoos I see don't make. I always ask guys, so what does that tattoo stand for? Oh, I don't know. I just go school. Perfect. You know, 
why don't we just draw a big penis inside of your fucking head? That looks cool. I just yeah, why not? Why even pay for it? Free hidden dick. So anyways, YT, you don't have no cravings for any ink, eh, brother? I don't know. I've, I've thought about it. I just haven't really got there yet, you know? Yeah. It wasn't something I really strive for. Oh, uh, nowadays, fucking, you know, people worry about the pain. You don't have to worry about that no more. I tried out a, a new, um, a new, uh, um, numbing cream. They ran out of gas. They ran out of gas in Prince George and they had to sleep overnight. <laughs> it's like, are you guys okay. adults? Wow. Okay, I'll, okay, I'll, okay. So anyways, YT. Yeah. Um, with the, with the whole tattoo first safe, people always worried about the pain, but I tried out this new numbing cream, um, my last tattoo with Kyle fought there. He did my ribs. Yeah. And he's like, fuck, Brock, you're saying like that. I said, well, I'm trying out this new cream, I said, right? Because, you know, at my age, I don't need the pain no more. I mean, I've gotten the worst spots tattooed. I just can't. I don't yeah. want to be enough. I want to be happy. So it's called the Holy Grail. Um, it comes out of Kelowna. Um, Holy Grail on your Instagram. Uh, the girl, um, Corinne, the owner of the company, uh, is her product. It works very well. We do have other uh, numbing creams here also that do work, uh, but my what my experience with um, with this Holy Grail was amazing. Like I tell you, I never felt a fucking thing. And wow. the, and the thing was though that I'm trying to say, and I'm not trying to, I don't push. Everybody knows I'm straight up. If it don't work, it don't work. If it works, it works. If it, you know, what I'm, saying? I'm straight up. But the yeah. thing about this fucking product is, it still worked the next day. Like, it still made the, you know, besides the, the second skin uh, on there, it just, it, like, three days there, I started feeling a little bit of, the, you know, the uncomfort then. But so I think it's like a product that works, you know, for uh, longevity, but it's just, it's just, a, it's a really good product. And artists that complain about uh, the, st- the skin texture and everything, um, the, the artist that was tattooing me, fuck, was telling me that I had nice skin. Um, so, it didn't make it tougher. It was man, this just gives like butter rock was working great. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't that where it made it tougher. A lot of artists complain. Listen, it's a product. It's got creams in it. Remember some, you're going to put cream on your tattoo after the tattoo fish. So don't try blaming a cream product for diluting. It's weird that, it's weird that you're saying this because someone just asked me this yesterday and they said, well, if you put freezing cream on there, isn't that going to affect the tattoo? And I was like, yeah, it's going to affect the tattoo because you're going to sit fucking still and I'm going to be able to do my fucking job. I'm going to do a good job. job. <laughs> Thank you very much, Oliver. Well, I, they, they, they're like, well, I talked to an artist. They didn't want to use that because it made the skin weird. I was like, well, I use it because I don't want you fucking moving around and needing a break every 20 minutes because I'm going to tattoo your whole fucking arm in six hours. And, and you, you know what, Oliver? It, if you didn't have the fucking cream, I wouldn't be able to finish doing what I need to do. And you know what, Oliver? The thing is that you'll do it in less time. I do. I shave hours right? off. I, Kyle was tattooed. But we had four hours put up to the side, okay? He did a nice big fucking dragon, sea turtle dragon on my side here. And we did it an hour and 45. Because you want yeah. to break it, I'm good. Yeah, go. Cool. And, and the thing is, though, remember one thing. It might be only two hours of labor, but there's a tip there because you it's save not- me two yeah. hours. I charge 200 bucks an hour, but I yeah. do my tattoos in half the time, maybe a little bit more than half the time. So it really works out to be 100, 120 bucks an hour. Exactly. Yeah, so if you want to pay a little bit more and save all, like tattoos are painful. Let me just bring you up to date here. The faster yeah. you can get it done and the less discomfort I can be in if I have to use a cream or something, then the more enjoyable the experience will be. Yeah. Hey, I just say this to anybody who wants to get tattooed on the stomach or a fucking rib or a chest. So just use the fucking cream. Yeah. Good property. Not Check it out. The Holy Grail. Yeah. The Instagram. DM the gal straight up and she'll mail it out to you. A shop should carry it and push it on their clients when they're getting their stomachs done and everything. Say, look, do me a favor. Use this cream. We do, that's you know? what we do. We hustle it. If I think it's going to be a, a yeah. hard sit or a long go for someone, I'll yeah. just say, hey, man, the cream's 50 bucks. I recommend using it. It only takes half an hour. By the time I'm set up and going, it's not going to take any extra time. By the time we're ready to rock and roll, you'll be frozen and we'll go. Well, if they come in about 30 to 40 minutes prior to the tattoo and they get it put on or they do it themselves... I put it on 45 minutes for a tattoo and it fucking worked out great. But I also listened to what Corinne said to me, Yeah, you know, shave and exfoliate the area. So I had to exfoliate the area a little bit and then hot water, dry it off, threw the cream on, saran wrap, got dressed, went down, had a beautiful breakfast before that. 
It's always good to eat before you get tattooed. I like that. Exfoliate, okay. then a hot compress. That's don't, nice. don't be an idiot and starve yourself before you get tattooed. Your, 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 don't your, get your tattooed nerves, your nerves are going to be so fucking paying attention that they're going to drive you crazy. So yeah. sugar, eat. You know, sugar is always good. And when you get tattooed, trust me, we'll wake you up when you're done. Okay? That's, <laughs> That's what I always say to everybody. We'll wake you up when we're done. Just take a nap. Right? So, anywho, I've seen your last piece you did, Oliver. This deer head? Yeah. That's just yeah. the beginning of a big back piece. I yeah. was going to mention that. He did that in two hours. It was pretty sick. Yeah, Are pretty you booked quick. up next week, Oliver? Is, it, is your hat back to normal? Um, yeah, I'm back. I'm booked way up. I'm booking into the end of June. Yeah. Holy. You're booked to the end of June? Yeah. Good for you. So anybody looking for a tattoo from Oliver is going to be looking at June. That's June. the earliest appointment. Well, you can't say that you're booked up till June. These clients you still want to come to the shop and not get discouraged that they got to wait till June because there's something well, we, got Tim, we got Tamara here. And, yeah, we got Tom. And my cancellation list is, you know, I got 10 or 12 people on my cancellation list. But, like, I do, you know, since we came to Terrace and been downtown, if I have an hour gap and somebody rolls in here, I'll do something little. So just come stick your yeah. hand man. If I got time, I'll do it. Yep. Don't be afraid yeah, to stop. I, I learned to tattoo downtown Vancouver. So it's like me and Jimbo are the same. We have a street shop mentality. If you come into the shop, even if we have an appointment coming up and you're here and we know your tattoo is only going to take a half an hour, an hour, we'll push it into our next appointment. And <coughs> get a hold of our next appointment. Hey, I'm running a couple minutes behind. <coughs> if you want to grab a coffee on your way in, I'm just going to be 10 minutes late. There you go. Exactly. That's from <coughs> hey, you know what gets me going the white team? What? People that say their books are closed. I don't know how the fuck these guys have books closed because you know why? They're drawing, they're running their own shops. They got no time to do nothing. Okay, anyways. I was helping out a client that was looking for a certain artist. So we don't have it, we didn't have that style here. So I reached out to a, an artist. I sent her an email with pictures. And I said, you know, get back. You no, know, get back. She works at a friend of my shop. So <clears throat> he advertised that her books were open. Or no, advertise that. So I sent a message. Well, this is brought, you know, send back a message or respond. She responds to my email the next day. Sorry, my books are closed. That's all she said. And then five days later, there's an ad on her Instagram saying, oh, my books are open. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I don't even want to send clients your way. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because I'm, I'm trying to find this female friend of mine, this certain artist. And she's like, well, here's Why don't female. you just let the person make that determination? Like, even if you're like Ryan Scorpino and you're booking a year in advance, don't close your books. Just say, hey, man, my next opening is in July 2022. Thank and you. the deposit's $1,000. So do you want to get tattooed by me? Is it a bit of a wait? And it's a bit of a deposit, but I want to do your tattoo. I'm sorry my I got to make you wait. Closed. Okay. Speak, speaking of, we got uh, Micah in the chat here. He's asking if Oliver is available in June 2023. <laughs> yes, that's I am. The, I'm that's the soonest he can come I'm to Canada. I'm wide open, dog. <laughs> so, so Micah, Books are wide open So, Micah, you, are we going to put you down for a tattoo in 2023 here? <laughs> <laughs> Schedule you in. <laughs> and also, we got Chino, our Battle Axe secretary, just popped in. And then I could put up an ad, Micah, and I could say, I'm booking into 2023, get your spots before they're all gone. So shout out Chino. I'm going to ha hack a dart. Why? We're almost done, man. Stop what being are done, you do? What are you talking about? But anyways, you guys know that I got an AYT. What up? Oh, you see what's going on here? You see what's going on here, right? You see what's going on? Yeah. Okay. It's all coming together. There you go. I'm waiting for my keyboard to be delivered. So basically, you know, you guys all know that I'm doing my own podcast, right? And man's and, moving up. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be on a Wednesday. It's going to be one and a half hours long. What are you going to call be, it? Be the rock cast. Talking shit. Talking shit. You're going to call it talking shit? Talking shit. Okay. Uh -huh. And basically, I'm going to be talking about shit, about, you know, how I was raised. Um, you should call it talking shit life. and eat chips and just eat chips while you do it. Or rock exactly. Cast. And, you know, <laughs> people who I think sometimes um, make themselves look bigger than what the fuck they are. And it's got to come to an end nowadays. People got to start acting themselves. So I let everybody know a little bit about my fucking past and let me know, let me understand what I've been through in life to get to where I'm at in life and why I like to help people because they're going to understand that. But anyway, we're going to be talking a lot of shit. And my first guest is going to be Oliver. 
Oh, I'm a great shit talker. Yeah. Mike, Please. you're gonna be with me on this show if you have time, eh? Yeah, I'll hop on the shit talk. You're gonna be the narrator, the man. You know, right. you're the one's gonna ask all these questions. All right. Like you know, when you Go sit ahead. there and someone do a documentary, and so what? what so what brought you to this part? You know, anyways, and then, you know, <laughs> and then you know, so basically, you can ask questions and I can answer them, and so we're about- talking shit. And yeah. we'll let you know when talking shit arrives. <laughs> all right, all right. But I really enjoy doing the Bury the Needle with Oliver. I'm very honored to be on this one with Oliver and you. <laughs> I love showing up. Um, a shout out to Malcolm, the man, yes. the myth, the legend. Yes. Right? You know, Malcolm has, uh, you know, brought a lot of people together with these podcasts. And- yes. Yeah, and inspired. I talked to him the other day about the people he's inspired yeah. to do the same thing and follow suit and all I say to people is if we're going to do shows, at least keep them up and keep them going, right? So we do this every two weeks. Uh, next week, we're going to have a special guest. I'm not going to tell you who it is. It's going to be straight out of... <laughs> and, you know, we're just going to try... Like, so basically, we're going to talk with different artists around the world and see where this industry is going. Um, you know, is it being saturated? Is it being disrespected? Are we keeping the word respect and class no. in with tattooing? Remember some. Me and my brother have been running shops over 20 fucking one years, okay? Yeah. yeah, we don't tattoo. Who fucking cares? Boo fucking who? There's always those fucking artists that complain that, why is the guy running? Like, oh, fuck you. Go fucking tattoo. I'm a fucking businessman. It's my business. Now go mind your own fucking business. Exactly, you fucking <laughs> fuck. For real. Artists should have houses. They should have cars. They should have everything. You make artists should do money. art. Fuck, man. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> yeah, Rocco, uh, Micah says, uh, get me on the Talking Shit podcast. <laughs> yeah, we're talking, we're you got, got that right, Micah, because me and you, brother, we're talking shit. <laughs> talking shit, that, Rocco. Man. And Susan right. wanted to know. All these mama. Susan wants to know how Malcolm's doing. Malcolm's doing good. He's just uh, I gotta he's take dealing this with some Pamela Anderson. He's dealing with some family stuff right now, so he'll be he'll be back oh. soon. And Chino says that your show should be called right. Wisdom with the Boss. Wisdom with the Boss. I'll be Thursday. <laughs> you know, and you're gonna be my first guest. <laughs> you know, I tell you something, you guys, every time I turn my phone on, everybody's like, How do you deal with that phone? Because 60% of the time, especially with the COVID, again, a lot of communication with all the Battle Axe Global Art Society that we have around the world. And now I'm communicating with lots of members. Yeah. And some members got to understand some. If I'm not talking to you, you're probably giving me a fucking ulcer. So smarten up, okay? <laughs> I'm not like I'm not to stop talking to you, but it's nice because I really enjoy this family. They put a smile on my heart. And to tell you something, we are a, a wild family. Yep. An amazing family, and this, this, this. In the next two or three years, when we get more of that foundation built uh, with the donations and everything, and getting out there and helping our kids and helping ourselves, I mean, join us next uh, open mic on the twenty eighth. Um, we have Brittany, Micah's girl, and also Danielle down in Nebraska. She'll be talking about prisons, and Chino, as you guys know, my uh, Canadian secretary. Um, we'll be talking about a new program that her and Ace, uh, you guys know Ace, our newest gold patch from Alberta. He's also the DL down in Alberta about a child, a, ch- a children's hip hop program, a music program That's cool. where, you know, kids will be getting involved and maybe give them some, some, uh, um, direction, but we're going to be talking about that on the 28th. And so you see. The Battle Axe Global, the society, I mean, we are tattoo artists, we are musicians, we are promoters, we are businessmen, we are people. I'd love to, uh, I'd love to get involved in that uh, that program, for sure. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's brilliant. So anyways, that's what we're going to be talking until the 28th. But, like I said, here we are at Bury the Needle, talking tattoos is what we want to do, and talking shops, talking the direction of tattoos. I mean, it's changed a lot. Like I say, uh, YT. Yep. I may used to have light tables. I got one thing in the corner and it hasn't been lit and removed. I just kept it because it's nostalgic. Yeah. Because that look to a shop, but it's changed, man. iPads and yep. print. Yeah, well, Are, am, or is artists, there are new artists drawing like it was recommended back 10 years plus back. 
drawing was the most important thing to do when you're being a parent. You're drawing, 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 drawing. There was guys like you guys ever know that fucking year watch that New York game show with that fucking apprentice kid on there, the monkey, Billy Dakola. Right? And he used to work for me. Oh yeah, yeah. You know that guy didn't know how to draw? He's really? doing what fucking ninety percent of the artists are doing today, stick and pace, okay? And just bold colors and everything. I mean, it, it was amazing. I mean, he had a hard time drawing a fucking rose. And and I ain't fucking bullshitting any of you guys, right? But then again, he was part of a reality show. I mean, he was selling fucking cameras on, in Miami. And then he asked him to be this. He told me everything. I mean, we were we worked together for about three or four years. And just, I don't know, just like every other artist, we at the yep. fucking whack jobs. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, like I say, you know. Anyways, Ollie, Lama. He went outside, he, didn't he? Yeah, he snuck outside. Where are you sitting in the shop right now? Why like, that you have to look around? Like where are you? Like what's in front of you? Uh well the like the front desk is in front of me. So where where's Oliver's uh podcast? How far away from you? He's like basically right beside me. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed Jesus Christ is in the last supper in his uh, Yeah. Holy fuck. So basically those microphones fucking uh, really separate the sound, eh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because sometimes I'm talking to you guys and I got my staff coming down here telling me about what's going on. They don't realize that, yeah, I am fucked up sometimes. I do talk to myself, yeah. but I'm talking to the computer right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not talking to myself this time. Yeah. <laughs> I come down, I'm having a full conversation. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I got an earbud on my other side where they can't see it. I'm having a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck, I tell you. Yeah. But yeah, I tell you something, YT. I really enjoy the tattoo industry. Um, I put I put it up there as one of the top jobs that I would love my children to ever do, as long as it's being respected. Yeah. Uh, I think every artist that knows how to tattoo respect is an awesome artist. Uh, don't ever judge your work towards anybody else's work because it is called art. Um, there are artists out there that think they're better than everybody, and we'll see where they're at in five years. Um, there's always someone better, but in what style we got to talk about. I always try to say to artists to stay humble. I do what I can to help artists um, any way I can, as long as they show a little respect. If they don't, I just like I say, go fuck yourself. But the tattoo industry is a beautiful industry. You're tattooing people with bodies, and you're getting paid for it. And what I always say is respect your clients and respect yourself and respect the tattoo industry. I think you're fucking God's gift to fucking tattoo because you fucking ain't. Trust me. You're just another fucking tattoo artist. Just do good work and shut your fucking mouth. Like I said, there's always room to improve. You're never the best. Oh, they're learning every day. I got a gentleman here, Phil Harris, okay? I, he's been here eight years. And every fucking goddamn year, he just gets more and more amazing, so intricate and clean and detailed. Yep. There's artists out there that can do stuff, but I'm talking about meticulous and it's inspiring. Is it going to look like that? Is it going to look like that when it heals? That's the most important thing. You yeah. see these tattoos with these fucking hot pinks and yellows. They look like they're jumping out of you. Listen, trust me. That tattoo don't look like that after it heals. Okay? Don't even tell me I'm wrong because I'm not fucking wrong. Okay. Been looking at they don't look like that. They don't look like that. They never, and they never stick like that either. I'll tell you right now. Never, never. I don't give a fuck. Right, Oliver? That's right. Unless you fucking are a nun and you keep it covered and never go in the sun and you put tattoo goo on it every day and you fucking don't even look at it in the light. <laughs> Dress up in bubble wrap. Like, turn off the light so you can see my sick tattoo, bro. Can't get, can't get light on it. Though. Bury the needle. This is bury the needle. <laughs> We so know anyhow, you guys, I think our, uh, a new day, not steak and blowjob day, blowjob and tattoo day. Yeah, I'm coming up there to get tattooed. Or maybe, e now. maybe equal rights. We just have oral sex and tattoo day. Oral? No, you're getting just too, so it's both. You're getting too <laughs> intricate. Hey, YT, YT, you said he's sitting right next to you. <laughs> hey, man, he knows twenty bucks is twenty bucks, and a hole is a hole, bro. Hey, everybody move to the left. Everybody move to the left. <laughs> Spent eight years of my life in prison. I'm afraid to mix it up a little bit. Listen, you guys, I love respect you guys, but we got to get ready for our next uh, open mic at 5 p.m. Yes. Same bad time, same, but not same bad time, 5, 5 p.m. <laughs> Which will be like 4 p.m. Actually, well, it's, uh, the hours went ahead, eh? 
I yes. do so. Yes. Anyways, Barry the Needle, thanks a lot, YT, for uh, hosting it. Like I said, big shout out to Malcolm Oliver. Thank you very much for getting me involved in the show. Shout thank out you to for being Trump. involved in my life, dog. Love, love you guys in an hour, okay? I love yes. you later. This is Barry the Needle, episode nine. We are at Divine Inc. in Terrace, BC. Rocco is at East Van Wear and Tattoo Company in East Vancouver. So join us in one hour for Axes Up, y'all. I'm going to head down to the grocery oh. store and get a steak because you know what day it is. It's steak and something else day. I <laughs> peace out, y'all. <laughs> Love it's F this. Fuck this. <laughs>